and welcome to Missed It by How Much. This is the channel that tests sports hypotheses by using computer game engines. This season we are managing the Los Angeles Dodgers in the National League West in 1990, attempting to win the division by not hearkening to the ghost of Tommy Lasorda telling us to play only veterans and ignoring Alfredo Griffin as our starting starting shortstop. <clears throat> Excuse me. We are currently reviewing or analyzing how the teams have done through the first two thirds of the season or four of the first six months of the season. We've gone through the National League East. Excuse me, yes, the National League East, the American League East, the American League West. We're now going to take on the National League West where the Dodgers play. Looking at the Atlanta Braves, we'll work from the bottom up. Braves are 44 and 64, 20 games under 500. I'm not going to spend as much time on these teams since we've seen them quite a bit on the channel. If you wanted to review some of the other divisions, they're available for you in previous videos. We'll take a look at a couple guys who have had really good seasons already. One of them being David Justice. He's out playing his real season. And Ron Gant. Both of these guys were all-stars. Playing tough center field, that's difficult. The Braves will hold on to Dale Murphy all season. The third pass, they, August 3rd has already passed. That was the day they really traded him to the Phillies in 1990. There you see some of the other players. Jim Presley is out. We'll probably see him since we're going to be playing the Braves in the near future. They're starting rotation. Second marker is their closer. This is a team that you know is up and coming. They're just not all there at this point. Charlie Lee Barrett has improved. He started off really poorly. Tom Glavin, you know the names. Had a tough in middle relief. They're looking forward to next year when they did win the division, beating the Dodgers out by one game. We'll see if that occurs. <clears throat> in the future, right now we're focused on 1990. Excuse me again for that. Up next will be the San Diego Padres. They are a team that has a tough looking lineup, but they have not put, and they have some good starters as well. Guys that are names that you would know, like Bruce Hurst, Eric Shaw, Andy Bennis. If you're a baseball fan at all in the 90s, or from the 90s, you know those names, or from the 80s even. They not put it together, they're five games under 500. There you see their pitchers. Ed Whitson's been their best outperforming his regular season stats. Bruce Hurst, slightly better. And then you see their later starters not doing as well. The bullpen. Greg Harris seems to be the best of that group even though he's not performing as well. I guess he's kind of a swing. No. He has 14 save opportunities. He only converted five, though. So I don't know what that says about him. Craig Lefferts, I guess, is the real closer. He has not pitched well. So that's part of the problem for the Padres. Here you see the starters in their lineup.
Benito Santiago with a nice OPS there outperforming his 1990 regular season. Still don't know what's going on at first base with the two Clarks. Jack's had the majority. And Cheryl's actually played better. I, I mean, I don't know the computer's reasoning there. I'll compare this. He's about, he's a little bit better than, wow, he was really good against left-handers. Not in the, in the real season. He's not performing as well now. Gerald Clark. Here are his numbers. He's really playing well, but again, limited. Uh, let's see at the usage here. He's, he's ahead of his pace, so, yeah. The computer's playing him about, well, he's still going to go over what he really did, but Peter had the option to play him more. Um, don't see Tony Gwynn. Let's see if he's hurt. If he's inactive, I'll really be shocked. Oh, he's hurt. Tony, a little bit under. The average is still over 300, though. Let's see it on the field. Very good. Okay. Padres are out of it, as are the Braves. I'm leaning towards saying that about Cincinnati. They're still under 500. They're close, though. They could go on a run. This is a team that ultimately did win the division and won the whole, whole thing, won the playoff. Won the World Series. They've just not put it together in this replay season two games down out of 500 10 games out of first place um teeter they've probably got a week to 10 days to really put it together although it does depend what the other teams do including the dodgers uh, mariana duncan Padding wise is just terrible. That's horrible. Yeah, it's fielding wise. Not great. He could outperform his regular season stats or at least the number of games played. Ron Oster Toaster outperforming his. Let's see how his usage wise. No pace to outperform. He's already outperformed. He's already outplayed his number of games. So, Glenn Braggs, the guy who was traded at the deadline, helped the Reds win the division. He's played there the whole season, and he will outplay his total number of games. And so far, he's outperformed. Joe Oliver. Always seems to get a hit against us. Been playing a lot. Not been injured yet. Not that I'm bitter. Not the fact that I play the game correctly with my catcher. Paul O'Neill, probably their best hitter on the Reds. Severely outperforming his 1990 regular season stats. He's not playing as much, though. Why is he not? Really strange there. He'll be under in usage, right? Not even close. And he's their better player, so. If you want to blame the computer, that's probably something they should have blamed. Uh, I don't remember him being injured a lot. Hell Morris. Of course, I don't follow that their group as closely as I do my own. He can't hit lefties. That would probably be the reason why he's not being and that, but he's still going to outpace. I guess this could also be the reason why O'Neill plays right field and he can play center field, but he's a one. Braggs is, yeah, Braggs is kind of, I think he can play left field. You can flip those guys. I'm not trying to solve their problems or anything. But Billy Hatcher has more games than Paul O'Neill. Got to play Eric Davis as well. 
Eric has underperformed, I believe. Oh yeah, by a lot. If you want to trace the problems of the Reds, you can go right there. We'll just look at for those people that are Chris Sabo fans. Look at his stats real quick. Underperforming as well. A lot of guys just not up to their normal stats. Jose Rijo. Not, I mean, pretty good. Not bad at all, but not as good. Armstrong, Browning, I mean, these ERAs are too high. Norm Charlton has been a swingman. That ERA is out of, out of sight compared to his real-life one. Randy Myers has pitched well. In fact, even better than his real season. All-star there. Rob Dibble. Not even close. Although strikeout wise, he might be right around that right pace. I don't do the math in my head, so can't tell you for a fact. That's it for Cincinnati. Okay, let's talk about the, the guys who are in it. Probably till the end. Houston, San Francisco, and Dodgers. Houston, I would say, is probably of the three has the hardest route to go, not just because there's two teams to catch or pass, but because their hitting is so weak. They have good pitching, they play good defense, they're a good fundamental team, but unless uh, somebody gets on fire like Glenn Davis, they're going to have a difficult time scoring enough runs. First, let's look at their pitchers since it's already coming up. These are good ERAs, mid threes, except for Deshays. Danny Darwin at a 2.73. He's been used as a swing, swing man, swing pitcher. Let's see his usage here. He's going to exceed it. Larry Anderson, who was famously traded. The Red Sox, because of his great ERA, has not performed as well. Three for five and save opportunities. Their closer is Dave Smith. 20 of 22. That's pretty good. That's where they're at pitching-wise. Hitting-wise, it's a totally different story. Let's just put OPS up here. Bill Dorn, all-star. Outperforming. Excellent job. Okay, let's tick one box there. One hitter that's well above average. Glenn Davis. Been hurt. Not his fault. Durability is only a five. There's his numbers above average. First and second. Tick. That's the second box. Casey Candell played 92 games out of 108 or so. Above average. I don't know where you want to count him as playing, but he's all over the map. That's three. If you even want to give Franklin Stubbs some love, even though he's below where he really was, I'll give you four. Again, these are iffies. And then below that, it's a mess. These are terrible OPSs for starters. Home runs. I mean, Glenn Wilson has power. <laughs> and there's nothing. Don't want to beat up Rafael Ramirez too much. But let's look at his fielding. Wow, look at there. 24 errors. He'll be able to break his record. And I think you can fill in the blanks as to why. I mean, give him some credit. Managerial-wise, they're... Above 500, five games over 500. They're, they're not an easy out. Of course, none of these teams are. We've had trouble with St. Louis in some series. We got swept by Atlanta at home this season. San Diego is a tough draw. That's what I like about no trades in this league. Everybody has to put up their best. They're trying to knock off the other team. They're not going to go wilt. They're not going to go jettison all their good talent. For lottery tickets in the minor leagues. 
next year or two years or three years from now. So you have the opportunity going down the stretch. Last place teams can knock out first place teams. It's all about who plays the best. Kevin Mitchell for the Giants. Probably MVP. Those numbers are just... He's going to break all of... He's already broken his RBI. He's probably going to break runs scored. His average is ridiculous. I mean... Let's see, usage-wise, where he's at. He's going to... I'd play him, too. It's been awesome. Will Clark. He's, now, see, if, if one or two of these guys went to Houston, they probably would be in first place. Kingery's played well. I think Brett Butler's a little below where he should be. Hmm. A little bit. Uh, one person is still, uh, he's playing better, it seems like. Yeah, 281 in August, 259. Matt Williams, still not, probably not going to catch up to his OPS for the season. 19 home runs, though. Pitching-wise, it's amazing this team is where it's at. These are not good ERAs. I guess Rus Russell, Rick Russell would be their ace. And he's outperforming his real staff. Bullpen's good. Yeah, certain players. <laughs> D Kelly Downs performs well sometimes. Jeff Brantley is excellent. As a closer, 13 for 16 in saves. He's playing better than his real season. Uh, Mark Thurman, also an all-star. The Bedrosian. I mean, it's okay for a relief pitcher. There you see Thurman playing well. Five for seven in save opportunities. Bedrosian, not as good, but better than his real 1990 season. That helps equate to win. And the team I'm sure you're sick of me talking about, Los Angeles Dodgers will be last. 63 and 45, or three games up. I, I still, some, a few things I've mentioned in previous videos, I think the main goal is to not have a losing streak. Um, and if you go and watch the American League East four month analysis video, you see what happened to Toronto. Toronto was either in first place or close to it. Went on a horrible stretch of, I think they lost 13 of 14. And now they're in fifth place. If the Dodgers want to continue this, you want to tread water. I, I feel like 54 games left, you can get 27 of those, you're at 90 wins. Does that guarantee you the division? No. But are you in it? Definitely. Could you, could you win it with 90 games? I would say you're right there. The other thing is injuries. We've been, we've had plenty of inter injuries. Uh, the two main guys, you don't want to get injured, Murray. And maybe this guy, Ramon Martinez. Not up to snuff, not up to his regular season stats, but pretty good. No complaints from me. I complained earlier in the season. Some of these other guys, Mike Hartley, started off great. Look at this ERA. Had some trouble getting it back on track. Gonna, he's already well ahead of his usage. Let's look at it. It's 251%. Problem in the bullpen. Still don't have anybody who's left-handed who can get left-handers out. Have they pitched decently? Yeah. Great. They've just been fine. Uh, Walsh. He's probably the best. And he's at 674 in OPS against lefties. Is that great? And I wouldn't consider it great. Is it okay? Yeah. But that's it. And if Walsh gets used, 
I don't see him for sometimes a week. Or at least a rotation move. Darren Holmes has been a great surprise. He's still continuing to pitch well. Wonder about him in pressure situations going into the playoffs if get an opportunity. Jim Gott is a right-handers only. He cannot face lefties unless the game has already been decided. We play a lot of close games. John Wetland really outperforming. Going to pass his innings pitched. We're going to see. We're going to give him a bigger role. Tim Cruz. Game wanted to check out this game from June the 4th. No thanks, not right now. Right, let's try it again. Tim Cruz. Up and down. He's right a little bit worse than where I would hope for him to be. Has saved the most games. Probably most trusted right now. Holmes, excuse me, Cruz and Wetland. Um, Jay Hal not shown here. Has just been terrible. And even when we expand to the 40 man roster, <laughs> look at his numbers. I can't trust him. I mean, that's pretty good against lefties, but how many reverse split guys are you going to have to face when the game's on the line? He's supposed to be a clutch player. I'll show you Stan Javier really quick. Might have an opportunity to hit more lefties in this next segment of the season when he comes back. Eddie Murray, kudos, just... Can't say enough about him. Great player. Hall of Famer. Cal Daniels also would be in that list of top two. Cannot afford an injury. Plays better defense than I thought. Yeah, he has a lot of poor plays, but... Mike Sosha really played well in the middle of the season. I started to tail off in the past month and some days. But still steady. Excellent third banana. Uh, Jose Gonzalez has had some more opportunities lately because of the injuries. He's played okay against right-handers. Plays great in the field. For sure a defensive replacement that is needed on this team. Let's shorten the roster a little bit. Mike Sharperson. If he would have played shortstop the whole season, I would have been happy with him. I don't care about these numbers. The, the goal is to just find what's my best defensive group. These guys are going to hit. They're not going to field well. We're just trying our best. we got to play somewhere. Unfortunately, we're not the American League. We don't have a DH. There you saw Kirk Gibson's stats. I mean, I've talked about these guys. Hubie Brooks is somebody we don't want to use as much as possible because his fielding is so poor, but also he strikes out a lot. C1 Samuel coming up. Lenny Harris. About right where he should be. A little bit under, but I'm happy with those numbers against righties. There you see his fielding. Jose Vizcaino, the treasure of the season. I thought he would be a good backup and maybe play short against lefties. Although he's not been great, he's much better than anything I could have gotten out of Alfredo Griffin. Who for a second will show his real numbers. I mean, that's a criminal OPS, 512. There's his fielding. 26 errors in 139 games. Biscayna won't get to 139 games, but I don't think he'll get to 26 errors either. Chris Gwynn is just a part-time player. He's started out the season, thought he could be the answer against right-handers in right field, but no. Juan Samuel. 
even against lefties, I don't feel like I get good quality at bats from him. 32 strikeouts and 130 at bats. Probably the best second baser. Second baser. Best second base. He's the best fielder at second base there. I spoke somewhat coherently. And not as much speed either. He's only tried one because he doesn't get good percentages. At least with Gibson, I do get that. Rick Dempsey is just a backup. Uh, just to something I didn't mention earlier, Kirk Gibson, in terms of stealing, 26 of 28 of second base. He can't steal third, but not a lot of people can. All right, that's where we're at. We're in the stretch of this race. 54 games, around 54 games, depending on the team, to go. I hope you have hung in there this long with me. I'm looking forward to going down the stretch and seeing who wins in these divisions. It'll be exciting either way, whether we win or not, but we're going to stay the course and hope to hold on long enough to even win the game. division by one game would be plenty for me. The next section, next time we do this, there'll only be 27 games left and there'll be five months completed. So then we'll take a look at the schedule and see how that breaks between whoever's in it. Hopefully the Dodgers will be. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time, hopefully, on Missed It by How Much.